Welcome to Talk 21 in our series on Mark's Gospel. Today we'll be considering Mark 7, 24-40, where Jesus casts a demon out of the daughter of a Syrophoenician woman. In recent talks, we've seen how Jesus often tested the faith of his disciples, and today we will see him testing the faith of a Gentile. The story is also recorded in Matthew 15, 21 to 28, where Matthew adds some details that are not mentioned in Mark's account. So, as I read the passage in Mark, I'm going to be weaving into it the extra details we find in Matthew. And if you're looking at the notes on my website, the words in brackets are from Matthew. Jesus left that place and went to the vicinity of Tyre and Sidon. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know it. Yet he could not keep his presence secret. In fact, as soon as she heard about him, a woman whose little daughter was possessed by an evil spirit came and fell at his feet. The woman was a Canaanite, a Greek born in Syrian Syrian Phoenicia. She begged Jesus to drive the demon out of her daughter, crying out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter is suffering terribly from demon possession. Jesus did not answer a word. So his disciples came to him and urged him, Send her away, for she keeps crying out after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. The woman came and knelt before him. Lord, help me, she said. First let the children eat all they want, he told her, for it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Yes, Lord, she replied, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then he told her, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. For such a reply, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. And her daughter was healed at that moment. She went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Jesus travels about 30 miles from the shore of the Sea of Galilee to Tyre and Sidon, which were Canaanite cities on the Mediterranean Sea just north of Israel. He must have been known at least to the Jews living in that area and was probably staying in the home of a Jewish disciple. Mark tells us that he didn't want anyone to know he was there. We're not told why but it was almost certainly so that he could take time to rest and to pray, or to spend some special time with his disciples. But it wasn't long before the news got out about his presence in that territory, and a woman whose little daughter was demon-possessed came begging him for help. From all we've learnt about Jesus so far, we can have no doubt that he had compassion on this woman. But on this occasion... He did not respond immediately to meet her need. There are two possible reasons for this. She was not a Jew and he was testing her faith. Jesus says that he was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel and adds, First let the children eat all they want, for it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. The woman would have understood what Jesus meant by this because the Jews frequently referred to the Gentiles as dogs. At first sight, it seems that Jesus is dealing with this woman very harshly. But we do need to remember when he said it. God's ultimate purpose was that the good news of the kingdom would be preached to all nations. But that was to take place after Jesus' death and resurrection. Paul tells us in Ephesians 2 that by his death, Jesus broke down the wall of the temple that separated the Jews from the Gentiles. But during his earthly ministry, Jesus' purpose was 
first to give an opportunity to the Jews, the lost sheep of Israel, to repent and believe. But that didn't mean that even then the blessings of his kingdom were completely unavailable to the Gentiles, if only they would believe. The true Jew, the true descendant of Abraham, has always been the person who believes as Abraham believed. Because of her faith, this Gentile woman not only received healing for her daughter, but also became one of God's children. But that brings us to the second reason why Jesus did not immediately grant her request. He was testing her faith. The fact that God sometimes tests us doesn't mean that he doesn't love us. But by being tested, our faith is strengthened. Reading the passage, we see various facets of this woman's amazing faith that provide important lessons for us today. Firstly, she heard about him. Verse 25. As soon as she heard about him, she came and fell at his feet. How has she heard him? About him, And what had she heard? We don't know. But Mark 3, 8 to 12 probably gives us a clue. When they heard all Jesus was doing, many people came to him from Judea, Jerusalem, Idumea, and the regions across the Jordan and around Tyre and Sidon, where this woman lived. Because of the crowd, he told his disciples to have a small boat ready for him to keep the people from crowding him. For he had healed many so that those with diseases were pushing forward to touch him. Whenever the evil spirits saw him, they fell down before him and cried out, You are the Son of God. She had almost certainly heard about the healings and the exorcisms. Why else would she come to Jesus to ask him to help her demon-possessed daughter? Her faith came by hearing the message about Christ, which is something Paul teaches in Romans 10.17. The more we learn from God's word about who Jesus is and what he did, and the more we learn of what he's still doing today, the greater will be our faith. And if we want others to come to faith in Jesus, we must tell them about him. Secondly, I'd like you to notice that she acknowledged who Jesus was. She cried out, Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. Admittedly, the Greek word kurios, here translated Lord, could be used then, as it still is in Greece today, as a polite form of address rather equivalent to Mr. or Sir. But the use of the messianic title Son of David surely implies that here it means something more. She certainly seems to have had an understanding of Jesus' authority, rather like another Gentile, that Roman centurion who came to Jesus for help, believing that Jesus could heal his servant at a distance, and of whom Jesus said, I tell you the truth, I have not found anyone in Israel with such great faith. Matthew 8 verse 10. So faith begins as a result of hearing about Jesus and coming to recognise who he is. And when we do... The appropriate response is to humble ourselves. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Thirdly then, six ways in which she humbled herself. Verse 25, she fell at his feet. Verse 26, she begged Jesus to drive out the demon. 
Matthew 15, 22, she recognised her need for mercy. Matthew 15, 25, she came and knelt before him. Matthew 15, 25 again, she admitted that she needed help. And in Mark, the passage there, verses 27 and 28, she acknowledged that she was not one of God's children. She was one of the dogs. But despite all this, she boldly persisted. Did you realise that you can boldly persist and still be humble? She certainly did. So then, point four is she boldly persisted. Notice that she begged Jesus. The word used for begged here means that she kept on asking. But Jesus doesn't reply. The disciples urge him to send her away because she keeps crying out after us. Now Jesus speaks. I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. Undeterred, she comes and kneels before him and says, Lord, help me. Jesus responds by saying that his first responsibility is to the Jews. But she still persists. Yes, Lord, but even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. To which Jesus replied, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. Sometimes faith is rewarded immediately. But often it's demonstrated by a dogged persistence that is determined to believe despite adversity and disappointment. And then notice that she believed. Jesus said that she had great faith. Why did he say this? Well, she believed that Jesus had the power to deal with an impossible situation. That takes some faith. What's more, she believed that he could do it at a distance. You see, she wouldn't have expected him to come into her house because Jesus was a Jew and she was a Gentile. She believed because her eyes were on Jesus, not on her ethnicity or her inadequacy. She kept on believing despite Jesus' initial silence and apparent denial at first. And then she declared her faith. Notice what Jesus says in verse 27. First let the children eat all they want, for it's not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. Now the word used for dogs here means little dogs and refers to family pets. It's possible that what Jesus meant by this was that his first priority was to provide food for the children, in other words, to teach his disciples at that moment, and not to allow pets to interrupt the family meal, which this woman apparently was doing. But as I've already mentioned, the Jews commonly referred to Gentiles as dogs, so there is also the implication that the time for the Gentiles had not yet arrived. Despite this, however, the woman replies, Yes, Lord. But even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. And it's at this point that Jesus says, Woman, you have great faith. Your request is granted. Notice that it's because of her reply that Jesus says she has great faith. 
He clearly sees this as a declaration of faith. And the declaration of faith is important. In 2 Corinthians 4.13, Paul says, It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. Since we have the same spirit of faith, we believe and therefore speak. And in Romans 10.10, 10, he says that it's with our mouth that we profess our faith. But this is no name it and claim it teaching. He doesn't say, I spoke, therefore I believed, or I'll speak to prove my belief. He simply means that if we really believe something in our hearts, we will declare it. On another occasion, Jesus said, in a totally different context, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Matthew 12, 34. Jesus saw the woman's declaration as evidence of the faith that was in her heart. And that was enough for him to grant her her request. And so, finally, she received what she asked for. Verse 30, she went home and found her child lying on the bed and the demon gone. In a way, she received a foretaste of the blessings that soon would become available to the Gentiles and that were already available to the Jews, if they would believe. And we too have received a foretaste of future blessings in a rather different sense. In the gift of the Holy Spirit, we have tasted of the powers of the age to come. Hebrews 6, verses 4 and 5. For example, the ultimate healing takes place when we receive new bodies, when Jesus comes again. But by the Spirit, through the gifts of healing, which are distributed as he determines, we may receive by faith a wonderful foretaste of the age to come. So, to conclude, if Jesus is testing your faith right now, remind yourself who he is, keep your eyes on him and not on the problem. Humble yourself before him. Persist in asking him to help you and declare your faith in him. And at the right time, he will do it. It might even be beneficial to listen to this podcast one more time and ask yourself, in what ways does this apply to you? God bless you.